You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheapgeek. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creepiest Podcast. This is episode number 123. Weird Wednesday, Georgia Guidestones, and Spruce Pine Alien Conference and Expo. Yeah. 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 Load it. Yeah. So we are back, and this is Weird Wednesday, and we're this is a continuation of our last Weird Wednesday. Because on Weird Wednesday, we talk about weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this Weird Wednesday is uh, the Georgia Guidestones. Cool. Yes. <clears throat> you ready? Sure. All right. <laughs> so, okay, if this is your very first time listening to this podcast, we do very much appreciate it. This is the Creep Geeks Podcast. You can find us all over the place. And if you're listening to us on any of the popular platforms like iHeartRadio, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, or any of that sort of thing, we appreciate it. If you're listening to us through any other means, we also appreciate that, too. We're just overall very happy that you're here today to listen to stuff with <laughs> us. There you go. That's our tagline. Listen to stuff with us. Right? Yeah. Okay, so this is a podcast. What's this podcast about? Well, broadcasting paranormal news and fun stories from our Creep Geeks Bunker Studio in the mountains of Western North Carolina. We're an offbeat news podcast that takes a lighthearted approach to the strange, the stupid, paranormal, and tech topics circulating the web. Yes. So, with this particular podcast right here, we have a couple means for you to contact us if you'd like to share, maybe have an experience, an idea, or something like that. We have a phone number that you can call and leave a message. And that phone number is 575-208-4025. Yes. And uh, did you know that you can support our podcast with little to no effort on your part? Well, you can. It won't cost you anything at all, and it's really simple. If you shop on Amazon.com, like most of us do, if you use our affiliate link, we'll get a small percentage. It doesn't change your price at all, and also helps us to keep the coffee flowing and gas in the albino rhino. Yeah. Yep. And Good. that is Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cheap geek. Yes. And we also have a couple of different ways you can get a hold of us. Uh, if you'd like to send us an email, you can use contact at creepgeeks. Dot com. And you can also message us on Facebook. Yes. So. And our, what's the name of our Facebook page? Creep Geeks Podcast. Oh, <laughs> nice. We made it easy. Yes. And we even have a group. And what is that called? Creep Geeks Facebook group. <laughs> See where we're going? It's actually something that we put lots of thought and effort into. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. And I would just like to say that the other day, a longtime listener had a birthday. Prospero, happy birthday. Happy birthday, dude. Yep. <laughs> we didn't know it was your birthday, but now we do. And we're shouting out to yes. you. Yes. Why do you keep looking at me like that? No, before? I'm just like, okay. Yeah. So, anyway, I thought that was pretty good. So, uh, our Weird Wednesday podcast, we typically do two podcasts a week. One about whatever we want to talk about. And the other one is a weird Wednesday. Yes. So something strange or weird, we just figured works with the weird Wednesday. Well, we, we try the to... W's, man. Yeah, we try to break down an unusual topic or subject, something that people have either <clears throat> never heard of or something that's currently, like, trending in the news right now. Yeah. So with this one, it, it's not that it's been trending. It's just an ongoing mystery that every now and then you hear something about in the news or you drive past it even and you're like what yeah <laughs> and also sort of comes off of uh, our trip down to georgia you know for the georgia bigfoot conference yeah and while we were down there we realized how close we were to the georgia guidestones and we had our second adventure down that way so we figured that we would go ahead and make it into a weird wednesday yeah. and with our weird wednesday we typically release a corresponding video on our youtube channel 
which if you go to YouTube and you look for Creep Geeks, you can find it. And we already have that video up, and it is the George Guidestones video that's there. But for this podcast, this audio podcast, we thought we would talk a little bit about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you ready? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, kind of goes like this. Once upon a time, <laughs> in 1980, in Elbert County, Georgia, guidestones were erected. Okay. And on those guidestones were 10 guidelines inscribed on the granite structure in eight modern languages. Yes. And at the top of the guidestones is a capstone. And inscribed on that capstone are four ancient language scripts. Mm-hmm. Do you know what they are? Actually, I did, um, and I'm drawing a blank now. Well, one so. of them is hieroglyphics. Yeah. One's the other one Babylonian is Babylonian cuneiform. cuneiform. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember the other two, to be honest with you. One but, is classical Greek, I think. Yep, that's it. One's yeah. classical Greek. And the other one is, I don't remember. Oh, man. Macedonian? Mm. I don't know. But, <clears throat> okay, so if you're in Elbert County, Georgia, for whatever reason, it is known as the granite capital of, I think, the world. Really? No, I'm not for sure. <laughs> but no, they're known for their granite, okay? And somebody decided to put this sort of hinge, like a stone hinge, up in Elbert County, Georgia. And it, it does have inscriptions on it. Those inscriptions are, are guidelines. And the whole thing is a little bit of a mystery. Even even though people say, um, you know, it's been solved or whatever, but it, every time you, you really sort of dig into it and you think it's been solved, it, it probably hasn't been solved, but it's just a weird thing, okay? Or every time somebody claims it's been solved, it's just a way to get you to listen to their theory. Yeah. So. And so we, we sh- in 2014, we were there. 2014, 2015, we were there. And we showed up and we checked it out. It was pretty neat. And then here it is, 2019. We actually stopped back down. And we brought uh, the folks from M&D Paranormal to go check it out because they hadn't really heard of it, too. I mean, they heard of it, but they hadn't really heard of it or mm-hmm. experienced it, right? It's just kind of an odd thing, right? Especially with the guidelines. Yeah. And it's the guidelines that's really sort of controversial. You know what I mean? And that's the and thing. And it starts off with the one that sort of fires people up. Yeah. It fired me up. But I'm oh, it was it. ancient Egyptian sca- Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Babylonian cuneiform and classical Greek. So it was the Sanskrit that we kept forgetting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my Sanskrit's a little sandy, a little rough. <laughs> right. But I'm yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> Gentle applause. Okay. Yeah. So the very first guideline, we're going to go through all 10 real quick so we can kind of, because you kind of have to go through them to kind of be able to sort of talk about Georgia Guidestones. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first one is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Okay. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new image, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Okay. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. And number 10, be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Weird, huh? And, yeah, it's weird. And the more and more we read about this stuff and the more documentaries we watch, <clears throat> the less I have a problem with the one that everybody else has a problem with. I actually have a problem with the one right below it. Well, won't you tell everybody I have a problem with the but It's fine. So, okay. A lot of the controversy is maintain huma- humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Right. Because everyone immediately, the knee-jerk reaction is, wait, you want to Thanos snap everybody off the planet? And that's not the intention of that one. What it is is, let's just say there were an apocalypse scenario and mankind is devastated down to a little few. 
try to bring the population back up, but try to maintain some level of population balance. Yeah. That's how I interpret number one, not literally Thanos snapping his fingers and suddenly everybody's gone, you know? Yeah. And, and, and <clears throat> well, I mean, that would make yeah. sense because in 1980, it, a lot of people say that's the height of the Cold War. Yeah. And, you know, President Ronald Reagan was in office. And a lot of people, a lot of people thought that Reagan would pull the trigger quickly. Yeah. With the whole nuclear deterrent and the, using nuclear weapons, which is silly because it was sort of a calculated risk on his part, and he he brought down the Soviet Union. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and, and that's the thing; it's a lot of people don't recall, you know, the actual history revolving around the era when this was built. Yeah, I mean, Cold War was a sincere threat. And well, I mean, next year it'll be 40 years. Yeah. So, so it's a long time. Yeah. Um, Especially internet years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, if you want to figure out what it is in internet years, just multiply it by seven like you would dog years, and that's also the age of how quickly your electronics age. Yeah. So, um, so people have a problem with the humanity thing, and they also have a problem with the eugenics behind it, because it pretty much says, hey... Um, you should basically guide reproduction wisely and pick the strongest and fittest to survive. Yeah, improving. But here's a, the strongest and fittest to survive. Okay, I, I kind of get it. Try to be, you know, whatever. But the diversity, it's kind of vague, and it's kind of at the end of the sentence. And I am all about diversity. Yeah. So that's the part where I, I have a concern. I mean, what happens if you attempt to improve uh, fitness and diversity and have someone who may have an illness or, you know, a genetic condition. Well, it doesn't. Here's my theory. Yeah. Um, basically this whole thing ties into the fact, and we'll talk about this guy who, um, sort of went down to Elbert and, and, and sort of, uh, sanctioned this whole thing, if you will, to have, make it happen. Yeah. I don't necessarily think after watching a couple documentaries and things like that, about the Georgia Guidestones, that it was about how to rebuild humanity after, you know, a, 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 you know in, a, in a post-apocalyptic situation. Yeah. Yeah. I think the dude was all about nature, was an environmentalist. Okay. And the way he looked at it is, is that, you know, we're being a cancer on the earth, so a way to, you know, basically take care of the earth, our planet, would be to utilize these these uh, these guidelines. Now, would that be moving forward, or if we had to start over? Either one. Okay. Because the last <clears throat> the the tenth guideline, right? Yeah. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. <clears throat> yeah. That's kind of what I'm looking at. So. And see, that's part of the emphasis. I mean, multiple times it basically says, you know, nature emphasizing you know the planet focusing on the planet yeah and i think that he thinks currently that at the time when this was erected that yeah. with all things going the way they were and the possibility of nuclear things happening or whatever cold war turning into a real war that we were just destroying the planet yeah be you know we were being a cancer on the earth and so these got these monuments no, the, the monument, the Georgia Guidestone itself, is a huge granite monument when you look at monuments, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's not very tall, but it, I mean, it's it's a pretty substantial structure. It and was built solid. to survive. And didn't they like, do the foundation, too? You know? Oh, yeah. It yeah. was built to survive, like, earthquakes, you know, time. It was meant to be there. It was meant to last. Hmm. In a way, the monument, or the way the Guidestone was constructed, it was supposed to be a compass, a clock, a calendar, you know, that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just put up there just to be something. And the person that went and had this sanction at the Elbert County uh, Granite Finishing Company, I think is what it was called, yeah, was a person by the name of R.C. Christian. And everybody says that R.C. RC Christian is a pseudonym. A lot of people seem to think that it's a pseudonym for the Rosicrucians. Um, but it doesn't necessarily make sense because... With the Rosicrucians, uh, a, a lot of what they talk about, it does not match up with what would be on that uh, 10 guideline list. Yeah, so. and plus the Ro the Rosicrucians, it's a combination of occultism plus uh, 
Hermeticism, Jewish mysticism, yeah. and Christian Gnosticism. If that were the case... There would be more references somehow. To religion. Yeah, and there's know? not. It's just eight modern languages mm. that's on the hinge itself. It's on the guidestone. So. And that's the other argument I have against some of the... the the conspiracy theories basically yeah. which is oh this is like we watched that one documentary and the guy kept going on that it was like a satanic obel you know oh, monument yeah, yeah. right he's yeah well i mean he yeah. was a, he was a pastor right and he's just a baptist sort of pastor and he he just knew yeah that you know strange things are happening there and that ceremony is being performed there and all that sort of thing. But then we've heard another theory that possibly this was an anti-masonic move by a group of Christians. Yeah. And I'm sorry if that were true and it were like a true Christian organization trying to put a bad you know m- spin, sort of spin. It, bad spin towards the Masons, then they would have said something about Jesus. Yeah. You know? Cause, and so, yeah. <laughs> the more you look at it, the more the religion side of things doesn't necessarily play into it because there's no really no mention at all. Yeah. And then some people say, okay, well, it was constructed by um, Archie. Archie Christian was a pseudonym, but it was constructed because it was supposed to be some sort of Masonic thing. There's no Masonic markers anywhere on it. No. So, and this is the heavy Mason work. So, the Rosicrucian thing, I don't think that's the case. The pseudonym for Archie Christian. Well, R.C. Christian himself said it was a pseudonym for something else. Yeah. Um, another theory is is that it was put on by one of the granite companies out there, and this whole thing was made by one of the granite companies to, as a tourist type attraction to show up and see it and bring tourist money into the town but of see, Albert. But see, even I have an argument against that. Well, a lot of people do because yeah. it was never really advertised. They, they had the unveiling of the stones, I think it was March 22nd, 1980. And you should it. Yeah. And only 400 people. Why didn't they invite like the whole county? Yeah. You know? And some people say that the, the person, R.C. Christian, was there yeah. in the crowd. You know, they, they had a, like a medium come in from Athens, Georgia, you know, and, the, you know, and that's a, that's another thing too, right? Uh, the guide zones have power because the theory is it lays on ley lines and all that granite mixed with the quartz. It amplifies power. Yeah. But the thing about the Georgia Guidestones is, is where it was originally supposed to be, for some reason, that didn't work out in its current place is where it is. Which is why the, the telescope doesn't work? Yeah, well, the telescope doesn't work because the way it was aligned by the surveyor who laid it all out oh. made some changes to it. Because you were supposed to have two other stones to symbolize or to mark where the moon, full moon, and um, <clears throat> the changing of the seasons happen. Like with the North Star? Yeah. So as as more guidestones. But they don't have them there because the way they actually uh, orientated the structure itself, you could see them so you could line it up to where it acts as a calendar. But there were some mistakes that were made so that when you look through one of the holes up by the capstone, you can't see the North Star like you're supposed to be able to see. But didn't like a month, because wasn't there like Hold a on. corrector stone? Well, there was, but the yeah. corrector stone wasn't done right either. So when the sun shines at the top of the capstone, it's supposed to go through this hole and create like a lazy eight, which is the symbol for infinity on the finished surface of the stone itself. And it doesn't do it. It doesn't work. Yeah. So there were some astrological things that were supposed to be there to make it a really neat sort of thing that just don't work because the way the surveyor laid it out there and it took, um, what was that guy? He was like a, I don't know. He was something like a physicist or something like that. Astronomer. Oh, that's what yeah. he, 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 <laughs> he was. A, he was. That's what a, a he was. Super smart. Yeah, completely different than what I thought. But yeah, he was an astrologer and he figured it out that it was laid astronomer. out. Astronomer. Like, astronomer. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to cause any problems here, man. But so it just it didn't work. So the theory of the post-apocalyptic uh, sort of warning. In a plan to rebuild humanity, I don't think works. Hmm. The religious aspect doesn't work. R.C. Christian being a Rosicrucian doesn't work. Uh, having it be a tourist attraction when you haven't advertised it at all for any sort of thing, it doesn't work. And another good point on that that I just wanted to mention, if it was made by the Elbert Granite Company as a tourist attraction, 
they had infinite resources. Their product was, was zero cost to them, pretty much. Yeah. They could have put a lot more work into it and made it larger or finished more of the edges. Yeah. So that that do, that's another part where it just doesn't happen. I mean, this thing supposedly cost $100,000 in, in 1980. Yeah, as a contracted service. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just doesn't seem to make sense. And where they actually put it was on uh, basically pasture land. It was on a hill, had a rise, no views were blocked. Yeah. Right? And the land was purchased by, um, as part of the, the deal with R.C. Christian. And I think one of, uh, what's the guy's name? Friendly? The guy who ran the, the, the granite company yeah. by his friend or something like that. Because his friend owned that pasture Yeah, area. And, he, and he basically gave the, so the land was purchased and then, you know, lifetime grazing rights for the animals yeah. by the person who originally owned the land. It was deeded over to him that way. And that was in the contract. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that it could never be developed, I guess. And that uh, kind of goes to the whole nature thing. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually it got turned over to the, the county. But I, I, I think with the whole nature thing. It makes sense because there were some supposed interviews that happened with Archie Christian at different times, and he brought up certain things that would uh, indicate that he had way more of of a passing knowledge with nature, like things like different trees and and animals and all that stuff. In other words, you know, they were way more knowledgeable about that sort of thing than the average bear. Yeah, we we watched that 2012 documentary, The yeah. Georgia Guidestones. And uh, it was it's called actually, the it's called the Georgia Guidestones movie. Yeah, it's actually pretty good to watch because. But they had the interview with one of the people who actually got to talk to R.C. Christian, yeah. and he, it was weird. It was like a kind of clandestine dinner meeting, and just trying to get the the guy who got to interview him or talk to him was trying to get him to open up, and that's where he found. Wow, this guy's got a very high level of botany knowledge. Yeah, and he's also traveled because he started to talk about. Um, the alpine forests and yeah. the varying forests in Alaska of all yeah. places, you know? And how these trees should be protected and all that sort of thing. So yeah, found it to be very interesting. And after watching that documentary, I am on the same sort of, okay, this makes sense for what the guy... You could easily put these guidelines towards, you know, rebuilding humanity, but you can also put it as a warning for the future that, you know, you need to do this to protect the earth. Yeah. Which is okay, I suppose. And if, if it is survival of the fittest, like it is in nature, then that would make sense when they talk about the eugenics part of this. And nature can't support one particular species that's way out of control and way overpopulated. That would make sense because that causes problems. And when you have humans being petty about the way they are and not getting along and not coming together, that also causes problems. So that might just be a personal thing, but yeah, well, that's where I like number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials, yeah, yeah. which is like, cause I, I, as far as politics, I'm not in favor of a bloated government. So, you know, yes. And I'm not a favor of useless politicians <laughs> or government officials. So, and be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature, leave room for nature. So there's a couple different things going on with the guys' stones that are pretty interesting. There's a, a time capsule somewhere, and what's in it, don't know. Did you know a bunch of geocachers what? tried to find the, ca- the time capsule and got in major trouble? It figures. Yeah. <laughs> Geocaching weenies, but that's okay. So um, desi- Designed to survive catastrophes, vandalized at least twice. And when it's design, when it says designed to survive catastrophes, one of the things you do notice is each of the pillars has a very strange marking on them. They have corresponding markings near the bottom or at the foot of them, and it shows you how to reassemble them if they got knocked over. Yeah, by like a nuclear wind. Well, I think it <laughs> it shows them how to assemble or reassemble. Yeah. So, which would make sense to put those key uh, markers on there. Um. There's also uh, information stones that kind of tell you what each thing is, how large they are, you know, the languages that they house, all that sort of thing. And uh, R.C. Christian basically said that he was just acting on behalf of pretty much wealthy, secretive uh, American patriots. Hmm. Like it was a group. Yeah. And that very well may be the case, you know. So... Yeah, it's kind of hard to say what's going on with those. I mean, I really uh, would love to find out the organization or entity behind it. 
I mean... I don't. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, what's the point of knowing? It's not going to change anything. And it, it it's not. If you read it for what it is, and if you look at the astrological signs, and if you look at how they set it up to be a calendar, sort of almost modeled after Stonehenge, where that could be a compass, a calendar, a clock kind of thing, just like this, this, this American hinge is. Yeah. It's not a nefarious thing. It's not ominous. It's not like an evil, you know, kind of thing. It's just kind of like a, a reasonable, matter-of-fact way of saying we need to control ourselves, we need to protect the planet we're on. And see, I would never got that ominous feeling that everybody has portrayed in various articles and different... Well, there was a church where yeah. it was like, well, this must be the work of the devil. Yeah. And it's like, really... And then, like, the reports of teenagers doing rituals there. And I'm like, no. I like in the... <laughs> it was teenagers drinking beer there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and some people are just freaked out by it because it is kind of a strange thing to go cruising across a huge, you know, relatively big, beefy granite structure just sitting on top of the hill as you go whizzing by on the road, you know? Well, remember the first time we went there, like, in 2015, we actually drove right past it and we had to do a major U-turn? Well, we just had to do a U-turn. Well, yeah. It know. wasn't major like Dukes of Hazard style, like whipping <laughs> I around I felt crazy. it was. <laughs> and the Dukes of Hazard uh, reference was because of Georgia. Yeah. Hazard County, Georgia. This is um, Elbert County, Georgia. So, kind of a strange thing. If you're ever in that area, it's absolutely worth checking it out. And it is under surveillance. It was well, cause it was because it was vandalized of the vandalism, twice. At now. least twice, right? And then... It was weird. So like, if you're there, don't do anything stupid because they will see you. Two weeks after we left, uh, somebody actually took one of the stones off the capstone. They took something, but it was yeah. replaced or whatever. But I don't know. Yeah. But there you go. And one of the things I thought was pretty funny is like there's a couple. Well, it's not funny, but there's a couple different things that were um, sort of kicked out there. You know, because yeah. it was actually on. It's been on a bunch of shows. It's been referenced all over the place. Um, the one I like was um, <clears throat> that show with Brad Meltzer. Oh, yeah. And uh, Decoded or whatever it was called. Yeah. He knows that the stones were built in 1979 at the height of the Cold War, and thus he argues that it may be in- intended as a message for the possible survivors of nuclear war. Hmm. That's where a lot of people got that from, and it makes sense being in the 80s. But I don't think so. Yeah. Well, if- Because the documentary that actually talked to people who actually talked to R.C. Christian who were still alive... Kind of points another way with it. Yeah. Even to the point where they won't really speculate. Well, like the medium that was What do you think? And they're like, well, we'll just kind of leave it alone, you know? So it's like they want the tourism, of course, but they're not going to change. They're not going to take away any of the allure or mystery to it. They had that one woman on the documentary. She's like, I know who it is. And then the camera fades, you know? Oh, the medium? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, of course you do. (laughs) Right? It's like. (laughs) <laughs> she's a psychic. She's a medium. But, you know, she does, She also talked about power, you know. And I don't think anybody has ever figured out if it really does lay on a ley line or not. Hmm. Actually. So, I don't know. I, I tried to look it up once, and there's a website that's really hard to load because it's got to load all <laughs> sorts of, like, GPS data. Yeah. And I think the ley line does kind of pass through there, but it actually passes through, I guess, the intended area for it. Ah. So, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Kind of crazy. I don't know. I, I think it's weird, though, because if it were, you know, if Brad Meltzer was right and it's, you know, intended as a post apocalyptic monument, should it be should it be a little more inland or do you think it would have been safe where it's at in the event of a nuclear attack? I don't think it would matter. It's granite. Okay. It doesn't give a crap. Well, okay. It's not like it's going to get flooded or anything. I mean, I'm pretty sure that rock can survive nuclear war and a fallout. Look at all the other rocks that have survived for a time, right? <laughs> I don't think it would care at all, really. Okay. So, well, because, you know, dam collapses, and if there were some sort of nuclear thing... I don't think it, it would matter. Okay. All right. I mean, who knows? And be, But my thing is that if there is some kind of nuclear thing, and who's to say people would go there anyway? I mean, it would be found eventually, you know... I mean, if you think about it, if you wanted information to stay for all time for people to see, what media would you put it on? Stone. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we have petroglyphs, like, here in North Carolina and in the Southwest that are super old. Yeah. You know? So that's classification. 
super old. Well, it is. How old is that? <laughs> well, that would be super old. Older than the 1980s. <laughs> yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So anyway, that was kind of our take. We actually went out to the Georgia Guide Zones, and MD was with us, of course, because we just filed up or finished up with the Georgia Bigfoot Conference. Went down there and did a little bit of a mini investigation because we, um, well, we just left the convention and MD brought the paranormal stuff with them. And we had our own paranormal stuff, but we decided to take pictures. But ran a K2 meter and a tri-fuel meter because of what people say, right? Mm-hmm. That you can get the weird energy vibe and all that sort of thing. And guess what we found, everybody? Nothing. <laughs> And there's even some, you know, people that will say, if you look through the center line to look to the horizon, you can see a blue orb at sunset. Hmm. Now, having done that the first time we got there, I did not see that. You know what I seen? What? The sun setting in that (laughs) hole. It was really bright. did not see a blue orb whatsoever. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, huh. And when we were there this time... Didn't see much of anything at all, but I was surprised that there was a, a people that show up. At, you know, there, at any given time, there's at least five or six people are wandering around yeah, checking things out. There so. were more this time. Yeah, I mean, the last time we went around evening time, and we still had one or two people yeah. stop by. This time it was like, gosh, like at least four cars, four or yeah. five cars. So it was yeah. kind of a thing. So I don't know, but if you're ever ever down that way in Elbert, Georgia. What's it called? Elbert County, E L B E R T, Georgia. Elberton? No, it's Elbert. Okay. Elbert County, Georgia. Go check it out. It's free. Just it's worth a couple minutes of your time for sure. Even though you sort of have to kind of go out of your way to get to it, depending on which way you go. Hmm. I think it's like twelve miles away from Athens, Georgia, or something like that. But anyway, worth a stop. Go read it. Go check it out. I mean, if anything, the structure itself is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and for those who are listening who think that there's blood on top of it from a sacrifice, it's actually candle wax. Yeah. And then so you'll be okay. Some of the, um, when it was defaced and vandalized, that particular instance, which was actually the first time, not the second time, which was closer to when we visited, but the first time it was defaced, it was because those people actually knew what to do. They knew what to throw on granite to yeah. cause it damage. So that's why it's got that permanent stain on one of the panels. A little smear. Yeah, and it kind of ate a little ate a little into it. Yeah, so, etched it. Yeah. So that's not a blood stain either. It, yeah. it does appear a little darkish, weird color. But you, it's just yeah. a discoloration. Yeah. So there you go. So anyway, that was our adventure to the Georgia Guidestones. There was no weird readings or anything like that. It just kind of is what it is. It's a little bit of a mystery because the people that funded all this and put this up, whether it's one person or a bunch, decided they didn't want no way to know. It's a cautionary tale or a guideline type message for humanity or something. But either way, it's a statement that's been made and we like the mystery behind it. So there you go. Yeah. Right. So at this particular point... We're going to talk about the other part of the podcast title, (laughs) which is Spruce Pine Alien Conference and Expo. Yes. We had an interview, right? Yes, with uh, Robert from Wonderfy. He's the marketing director for the Spruce Pine Alien Conference and Expo, or SPACE. Yeah, so they're doing all that marketing and promotion for the event. And you were able to talk to him where they explain the vision behind having a UFO conference and expo in a little town of Spruce Pine, North Carolina. Yes. And Spruce Pine, Pine, North Carolina, if if you don't know about it at all, you would never know about it because it doesn't stand out as being anything remarkable. Well, it's such a tiny... Don't give it away. (laughs) Because in the interview with Mr. Robert, he brought up some pretty interesting facts about Spruce Pine. That makes the idea of having a UFO alien type conference a viable thing. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and take a second and play that interview for you. And you're listening to the Creep Geeks podcast, and we'll be right back. Hey, everyone. It's Omi. We're here in Spruce Pine. And today we're talking to Robert, the marketing director of the space event going on next month in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. How are you, folks? (laughs) Glad to be here. 
Uh, my name is Robert Storch and I'm with Wonderfy and we're doing the marketing part of the uh, space event, which is the Spruce Pine Conf Alien Conference and Expo, June 14th and 15th, right here in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. It's a very pretty town. So it is yeah. gorgeous. It's a little tiny. If you if you blink, <laughs> you're, you'll drive right by it. But it's it's the people here are amazing. Yeah. Um, it's it's gorgeous. It closed down closes down on Sunday. So oh. uh, we're trying to work on that aspect of the world. So that traditional, historic, old small town Carolinas. It has that draw and allure. But tell me more about space. It's the Spruce Pine alien conference and expo I, absolutely it's small town america and aliens that's not something you usually see in the news you don't so. but because because we're of the location of spruce pine we have some of the most amazing gems and minerals and veins of quartz in the mountains and it is the world's purest Quartz. It has actually been used for the Hubble telescope. Wow. Uh, it's been on, used on the um, space shuttle. Uh, every cell phone piece of equipment, computer, has some parts of spruce pine quartz in it. The te uh, there was an article in Wired magazine saying how um, we are the, the most influential city in the, in the world, basically, that nobody's ever heard of because everything that goes into technology has come out of the mountains. So every piece of everyday technology from my phone to even this recorder possibly has a piece of spruce pine in it. It does. It's the quartz is so pure that they, they can't get it anywhere, anywhere else. And, and it's just amazing here. Yeah. So it's, it's been part. And for those people that aren't particular, aliens. It's also used in the sand traps of Augusta National uh, Golf Course. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's how pure it is. That's fancy. And, and speaking to the ufology and alien community, there's a bunch of different theories about aliens being in search of precious minerals. So if there were alien activity, or, you know, according to ufologists, uh, this would be some sort of hot spot for those precious minerals. Exactly. So that's uh, since since the beginning of spruce pine, they, they've had sightings all around the mountains. Uh, Mount Mitchell is is just south um, west of here. It's the highest mountain east of the Mississippi. Uh, there's different theories about what's underneath that mountain. Really? Uh, <laughs> the Brown Mountain lights are are just around the the area. Yeah. Um, we've had supposedly three uh, crash sites that have been investigated oh, wow. just around here. And Mitchell County is, um, and it has been reported, you can see on the Fox News article, uh, the number one county in North Carolina for Freedom. UFO oh. sightings. Wow. So that's why it made such sense to bring a festival here to, to embrace everything that is spruce pine. It's, okay. it's always had been involved in the, at the center of UFO activity. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. because it's just a small city, a uh, small town, it doesn't get the recognition that it should. So are we shooting for the Roswell east of the Mississippi, or do we just want to bring attention to the great history and interesting facts about the town? Um, if you talk to some folks, they'll say it's, it's bigger than Roswell, but those okay. are just locals, and <laughs> I, I'm new to the town, and I, there's a lot of stories, just a lot of stories coming out of here of people who have um, had encounters, yeah. abductions, relationships, ongoing relationships. Wow. There are some amazing speakers that are uh, coming to the event. And I saw that on the event. It's well, You're going to have an open... Open like, panels, open and panel. you can go up on stage and, and speak about your adventures or... <laughs> Experiences. Encounters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's people that have lost time that have ongoing relationships with folks. Um, okay. All kinds of things. Wow. It's, it's, I am, I am simply amazed. You know, I, I saw a UFO when I was a young lad oh. up in the sky. Um, it changed my life. Really? And it was amazing. I can remember. And so 
to hear these people come up to us and say, thank you, thank you very much for putting this event on so I have a form to, to tell my story, to tell what happened to me. Nobody ever believes us, and now we have an opportunity so to have something like this. It, it does come from a place of the heart because I guess this meeting or event, meeting of minds I would say, is some form of validation for your own experiences, mm -hmm. but it also gives everybody else a platform to share their experience as well. True, so, and, and to yeah. hear some, some different stories because this, yeah. I, you, you, hear, you see what's on TV and people tell you all these kinds of stories, but yeah. to actually hear real people, 90 year old people, yeah. um, all kinds of folks just tell their stories and how similar they are yeah. in, in, in what's happened to them. And that's the thing, modern culture usually feeds a certain idea you know, down our throats. Um, we just talked about on the podcast the other night, the cigar-shaped UFOs. And I'd love to hear those stories from people in this community, how their UFO experience went. Because, you know, growing up, I'm like, oh, it's just the flying saucer or the triangles, the military triangles. But here in Carolina, you have a range of different experiences and stories, and I'd love to hear those. So uh, I'm excited for I, the event. I, I, we're excited yeah. also. Did, uh, on a side note, did you get to see on, on the Facebook feed of the picture of the alien, of the spaceship. No, I didn't. We, we posted up there a cigar-shaped picture. Oh, okay. It had never been shown before. It had never been seen anywhere. And that's, yeah. it was just snapped out of. That's cool. Because like, I, I, I'm going by the encounters that we've read, like the historical ones. <laughs> because once we found out about space, we, we tried to do our own research. And there are a bunch of accounts um, of cigar-shaped UFOs. And then the most common thing which touches home with me and Spruce Pine is the Brown Mountain Lights and the Orb experiences right between Spruce Pine and Marion, North Carolina. And I'm like, that's what I want to interact with and the people I want to meet. So <laughs> all those yeah. that's the beauty is is where we're situated, there's people are able to come from all around, from Asheville, from yeah. Charlotte, from Marion, you know, all over the mountain and coming up to the mountain and having an experience that they can just feel comfortable at yeah. and, and share their, their encounters. And that, that all is wonderful and it's what I look forward to. However, we don't want to make it too serious. I know there's going to be fun at this event. Oh, lots of fun. So uh, the one I want to know most about is you're going to do an Area 51 Playhouse and a whole uh, like costume contest yes well hopefully we're, we're having it, yeah. we're having two separate yeah um costume contests we don't okay. want to shame the little kids with the adult costumes so yeah. this, early in the morning will be a uh, kids costume and there okay. are going to be a, a number of prizes donated by local uh, companies here cool. and then they can go into a bounce house inflatable section it's going to be the whole upper parking lot of the Mitchell County News, uh, the Miss Mitchell Journal newspaper, up up there and they can play for hours while the adults are down in the beer garden and talking to <laughs> vendors. Uh, we have a huge stage, yeah. a real rock stage uh, that'll be set up for people to, to tell their stories. And then in the afternoon, after they visit the beer garden and partake in all that, yeah. um, we're having an adult Okay, costume more grown-up contest. Yes. And then, late, a little about 3 o'clock, we're going to put, be putting alien ducks, little rubber ducks, in, and everyone has an opportunity to, to buy a raffle, buy their duck, mm -hmm. uh, and they can, we're going to drop them all into the river <laughs> and let them run yeah. down the river, and the first, first duck to cross the line will we'll get, we're trying to see maybe a... a a big screen TV okay. as one of the prizes. So prizes, to me, yes. <laughs> a signed Mike Barra uh, oh, wow. book, yeah. you know, autographed, and a, a bunch of prizes and just to have some fun. So yeah. the the key to this experience is we want families to come in up, uh, experience the mountain, come in to the town, and have fun. Okay. You know, it's we'd love. We know there's going to be a serious side. We know there's peer, people that are serious about their UFOs and and what goes on in the world, but we also wanted to have a chance that they could bring their kids up. The kids will feel safe, have fun, and they can indulge with the vendors and the other folks that are here and hear the stories, yeah. hear the panels, um, 
and ha and ha just have fun. And then tell me a little bit more about some of the vendors and some of the sponsors, because I know you've got a few vendors going on. Are there any ones that you're really excited about or you can think of offhand? Oh, there's a gentleman who's selling alien currency. Okay. Uh, he's excited about that. But it's a, it's a lot of, um, at the moment, we still have room for a couple more vendors, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's people that are local to Spruce Pine that are interested in sharing what they do and some of their experiences. Like, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that there'll be some minerals from, from the mountain yeah. that people can sell their quartz <laughs> and all their, their yeah. excitement about that because uh, Spruce Pine minerals are, you know, world-renowned yeah. and um, the gem and rock and gem festivals here for, I think, 35 some years. Yeah. And so that's a big opportunity. But we wanted to, to give the folks of Spruce Pine, at least for the first one, an opportunity to come out and show people that aren't from the mountain, this is what we're about. So this like is the excitement about it. So it's, it's not, we've asked them to include some alien uh, related materials, Yeah. but we wanted a lot of people to get to know some of the spruce pine so, people and yeah. when they come back next year we'll do more alien uh related materials but just get to know people you <laughs> so know so more of like a focus on the local flavor basically correct so, and, and there's a lot there's yeah. this uh supposedly a woodworker uh we have a comic book uh vendor who uh, um, one of the local artists drew the comic book mm -hmm. another local person is publishing the comic book and then uh, distributing it right at the festival it's the only place it's going to be available done right for the festival so if you want an exclusive first edition of space and have your first taste of local talent that would be the book to get so. and i think you might be able to get them to sign it so yeah. it'll be uh, great <laughs> That's and cool and the yeah. And the folks around mm. here have been really supportive of us. Like um, the Big Lynn Lodge is um, our court sponsor. They've really jumped in, and it's a it's a fantastic uh, place to stay if you're coming up for the festival. Yeah. They even include uh, a complimentary dinner and breakfast for your stay. That's nice. And it's just it's if you've ever, never been out there, you've yeah. got to stop in and see it. It's just gorgeous. Uh, it's a really nice place. Um, the Western North Carolina Service Group has taken up. Uh, the two mines, Sabelco and Quartz, yeah. are getting involved with that. Uh, Gem Mountain. Oh, uh, really? Is, <laughs> Gem Mountain has told us that they are going to bring a play area for the kids. Okay. And have gems and minerals in the sand, and they can go. I might be in there. <laughs> I, I told them that. I said, come do that. Bring yeah. a little bit of yeah. what we're, what you do yeah. in the mines. Have fun for the kids. So that's all going to be there. And see, that's the one thing, because I noticed if you get up here, besides the space event, um, there's some other things that I'd want to stay up here and do. And not just, you know, okay, let's have this event devoted or about aliens and spruce pine, but there's so many other things. So I understand that the lodge would want to, hey, come stay with us. You can enjoy more of spruce pine later. <laughs> so, exactly. You get to yeah. stay, over, stay overnight yeah. and see. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Their views are absolutely gorgeous. But even just coming up to some of the mountains in town yeah. and some of the sites are just above the mountains. Like I was just on, up on Sunset Mountain um, a couple days ago and the clouds are down in the valley yeah. and you're it's like a, you almost feel like you're in another world like and, part of an alien kind of encounter because <laughs> you just look out and all you see is little islands of mountaintops yeah. all around the valley little down peaks there poking and through and it's like people who listen to the podcast they know I like two things I like rocks a lot and then I like photography so there's all those opportunities here as well uh, and why absolutely. not attend the spruce pine alien expo and conference <laughs> it's a little bit of a mouthful it, it that's a why mouthful we just say for me but yeah. That's why we say we say space. space. Yeah. And and one of the other things about the about the event is it's free. Yeah. Ninety five percent of it is all free. Okay. Uh, the the rock bands are all free. Uh, you have to pay for your alcohol. Um, I think in some face painting and things like that might be a dollar or two for for things like that. But we've tried to make everything free. The only charges are for Mike Barra, who's mm -hmm. coming in from Ancient Aliens. Uh, he's going to be doing a talk on the Bermuda Triangle, 
and uh, the moon, the encounter of the moon landing and, and things like that. That is a separate event for yeah. Mike in an in a enclosed uh, facility across the street, which is gorgeous. Okay. It's an old factory uh, that's been uh, rehabilitated and made to look gorgeous. Okay. If you don't get a chance to see it, yeah. stop over there. It's just absolutely, it's cross street uh, building. It's gorgeous, absolutely. They've done an amazing job with the yeah. building. And they have rooms in there that'll hold um, 150, 200 people for Mike Barra's uh, event. And How we're selling- How long are those talks? I think he's gonna be talking for an hour. Okay. And uh, question okay. and answers, uh, signing autographs uh, yeah. and such. So uh, it's limited. We, okay. and so if people are, they can get tickets up on the website, mm -hmm. but they're selling out, and once we sell out, we won't, okay. there, there won't be any more room for it. But so. there are two different opportunities to hear him speak. So. Two on two different topics. Yeah. He's not even repeating the same wow. topic. So you get to pick <laughs> Mike's brain on two different topics, yeah. which is which is an opportunity. And he's also and so we didn't want to leave anyone out. So Mike is also going to be part of a panel up onto the main stage mm -hmm. uh, talking about aliens. Okay. So you'll actually get three opportunities to see Mike uh, talk. And if you've never uh, seen him or heard him before on Ancient Aliens or on his podcast, he's a funny guy. He really is a, a hoot to listen to and, ha and interact with. I, yeah. I've, I've been able to talk to him a few times and he's great. And I know you guys have a link to him on your website as well so you can check out like his whole history and his background there too. And, exactly. Yeah. It's Some people don't, I mean for us up on the mountain, you know, we get to see ancient aliens every once in a while or, <laughs> and the rest. But if, you, if you've never yeah. uh, seen him on the show, you know, his book, and, he, and he's done an actual um, n fiction book, yeah. which is Light Beringer. Lightbringer. Brightbringer, yeah. Because yeah. I, I looked that up and I was like, how did I miss that? So, yeah. It's like, wow, he's delved into a few little things. And, yeah. and suppose he's best he, uh, he is a best selling on the uh, mm -hmm. Times bestseller list. So it's work that people are reading and enjoying and uh, bringing him here was an opportunity we couldn't pass up. It's yeah. give him a little bit of expertise to the little town here. So we have all these different reasons to get excited for this event. It's barely a month away. A uh, little over three weeks. It's yeah. Three weeks and three days. Yeah. Are and it's amazing. Now, We're excited. There, yeah. Is there anything else, though, that you could think of that we, we would want to share with people or give them a reason to be more interested in this event and attend? Well, we'd like them. I mean, the, the reason Jimmy uh, put this event together was to, to let people know about Spruce, Spruce Pine. Mm -hmm. um, they're going through. The, some of the factories have left here. And, you know, they're in a transition part of uh, time. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, he thought it was a great opportunity to introduce people to Spruce Pine, let them have some fun, let them have a little bit of a serious side to it about the aliens, mm -hmm. because we're, we are packed with alien uh, lore and adventure all around us, all around Mitchell County here. Mm -hmm. And so people can have the opportunity to come up here, spend the day, see the gorgeous mountains and, yeah. and nature that's here um, but also get to know the folks here and have a first introduction to to what Spruce Pine and Mitchell County is about and get to know the folks and hopefully we're, we're hoping a few folks will be like wow this is gorgeous I'd love to move here <laughs> so it's it's giving visibility to the town I mean there there's a dual purpose absolutely provide an entertaining reason to come here but also showcase why this town should be on the map. And so. Exactly. And okay. Jimmy's been doing it since he was six. Okay. When, he was, when he was six or so, he, he drew a, a postmark for the Gem and Mineral show mm -hmm. and had the post office stamping it on the day of the show. <laughs> He's uh, dressed the um, theater up when the Flintstones came. Oh. He made it just like bedrock and he decorated the theater all yeah. by himself and got in there and did that. So. Jimmy's been, since he was a kid, he's had a love of spruce pine. Mm -hmm. and, and he's always, he tells the story lovingly. He spent the first half of his year, of his youth, trying to get out of spruce pine. And now he sent, spent the second half of his life trying to get back to here and really make a difference. And Jimmy is the man behind the concept of spruce pine. He is. And, and you're here to help execute the vision. We are. We're trying to give the marketing vision for him. He's, yeah. um, he's had this vision. He wants to make spruce pine 
you know, visible, but have people have fun. Yeah. And thanks to folks like you, Thank you. Um, <laughs> we, we, you know, we're just trying to get the word out and yeah. just have be serious, yeah. but have fun. We want we want people to feel safe here, and see what Spruce Pine is about, but tell their stories, yeah. and and just know that that this is a safe haven for your experience and the times you've had and that maybe nobody else has believed you but we're going to be bringing in other people that have had similar experiences yeah. or completely different experiences and this is the one time you can tell that. Someone to listen to you. Exactly and, and non-judgmental yeah. listen to you. Oh uh, we have friends at M&D Paranormal and that is the one key thing that they stress. They're a paranormal investigation team but they stress the events they hold non-judgmental. You should feel comfortable at this event. You should feel, you know, free to discuss your opinions even if they're way over here and I'm here. We can both talk about pretty much the same thing. And with Spruce Pine, I think it's it's the emphasis that we're bringing a new idea here, but you can be comfortable and have fun while we bring these new ideas here. Exactly. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> well, it, it is and it's yeah. you know, I think a lot of the locals are starting to embrace it. I mean, you saw downstairs Poppy's Wildcraft, the store's decorated, and if you go yeah. through town, there's a number of stores already decorating uh, and getting into it. And the folks that have been here and grown up here have always heard those stories. They've yeah. always had the sightings and you know, never the opportunity to, to express them. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden <laughs> they're they're being given this opportunity, opportunity and they're just like hair down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yum 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 like little pack bed. Yum 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 yum. I want a little more of this, a little more of this. So let your hair down but have fun. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Put your hair green and let your hair down. That's and true. <laughs> people are, you know, we've gotten um, a lot of basic it's free but we're you can go online and sign up for tickets we're giving away uh, t-shirts for free if you sign up yeah I did want to mention that because I don't think um, like even myself up until a week ago didn't realize register for this free event you can get a t-shirt um, there's some other stuff going on as long as you make sure you register online exactly and we'll put a link to that in our show notes so. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that yeah we just wanted to you know yeah. it's it's free We'd like to get an idea of who's showing up, where they're coming from, just, just basic information. We're not, we yeah. won't sell it to anyone. Um, we are talking the UFO community. Here, I know. So. It's all It's all just... We just want to know you're coming. Yeah, we just want to know you're coming. And 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 possibly, just say, <laughs> next year, here, you're first on the list to know what's going on. That's the and, and the newspapers have been covering it. Uh, Asheville newspaper has been covering it. Charlotte newspaper has yeah. been covering it. Uh, they've been asking for interviews. and w all around. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's, you know, if you go on there, sign up, and we'll give out the free things. Um, and the same, we're going to be selling the tickets for a bigger push for Mike Barra mm -hmm. and if you sign up for the buy a ticket for Mike Barra we're gonna have a personal autograph session with him that oh, wow. one of his books personally oh. autographed for you to uh, take home with you cool. so we'll be adding that to the list today that's so true. it's excitement <laughs> that's a big announcement I look forward to that's it. a first for <laughs> yeah. you it hasn't even been breaking. mentioned before <laughs> Did the lights go off somewhere yeah. is it breaking breaking but I think that's pretty awesome um just to wrap things up though, if people have questions or they want more info or need any help, should they reach out to you on Facebook or email? What's the Absolutely. best way to get in contact with The you? best way is, is on Facebook. Okay. Uh, like us. We just reached 300 a uh, half hour ago, so oh, wow. we're excited by that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, reach out on Facebook. We monitor it all the time and that way we can answer questions immediately. Okay. Um, our email addresses are all there. Um, they can feel free to, to contact us at uh, Wonderfy okay. um, and reach us there. But the best way is to is on Facebook. And if you just type space spruce pine, it's actually a first result. So, well, you know. thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and the website is um, spacenc.com. Okay. So they can go there. That's where they can, um, if you, if, you know, anyone who wants to be a, a vendor, mm -hmm. uh, the vendor forms are there. Yeah. Um, the tickets for Mike Barra are there. Uh, they can buy shirts. There's only 35 of the green shirts left. Okay. Those will be sold out permanently after yeah. the 35 are done. The colored ones are just coming in. Uh, they'll be delivered tomorrow. Uh, oh, wow. So we're excited on those. Those will be sold all the way up to the uh, event. Uh, all that and the bands. Yeah. 
all the bands that are playing, they all have uh, YouTube videos of what oh, the music they play. I was, yeah, I was looking for that. That's okay. on that page, yeah. on, on the music and speaker side. That's where it is. Great. <laughs> and um, if they want to pay for the vendor form, mm -hmm. uh, that's there. If okay. they want to print it out and send it to us, if they don't like the, you know, the internet, yeah. they can always print it out and send it to us. That's on the more page. Okay. And so all of it's on there, but feel free, uh, your listeners can feel free to uh, contact us and we'll be glad to help them out in whatever way we can. Cool. Well, thank you. It was great talking to A you. pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and well, look forward to June 14th and 15th. I so. can't wait to see you guys here <laughs> and you. Uh, having fun and getting your, answer, your questions answered and yeah. meeting new people. That's a cool thing. <laughs> we have lots of visitors. So thank you. Thanks. And we're back. So after you talked to him, what'd you think? For me, it was weird because it was like, I, I still, I have that intrigue about the whole aliens and things like that, but I'm torn. Am I going to be interested in all the alien stuff going on at this event or am I going to be wandering this adorably charming tiny town with like the <clears> super <throat> rich rock history because i'm a rock nerd well that's know? the thing there is a ton of minerals yeah and in the mineral history we were lucky enough like right after we we um we interviewed robert we did stop into one of the rock shops the local rock shops yeah what's the name of that place uh, you should throw them out there because they were very nice yeah. very, rio, very nice people. rio doce yeah yeah rio doce gem mine and it's right outside like as you're leaving spruce pine pretty much and it's this very quiet little gem mine and rock shop <clears throat> really pretty too yeah and um <clears throat> great people they were super sweet and very funny the owner she made me laugh a whole bunch yeah because <clears throat> yeah. I, I was i said yeah, this is nice because we've been to places just really dusty yeah and she's like yeah we try to keep it clean and we smell good too <laughs> and I thought, well, well that's very nice i do appreciate well, that like she had a full-on uh gem fasting class going on in the back and you couldn't even <clears throat> so you you couldn't yeah. smell it you no, know? I mean, it, it, yeah, and it, it's, it's, when it, was, I, it was good. I yeah. mean, she came up to us and said, are you the creep geeks? <laughs> and see, I forget that we have a sign on the van. So every time I hear that, I'm like, no, <laughs> who are you? State your business kind of a thing, right? But no, I mean, they, they were nice and they, they talked to us and they asked us if we were going to go to the uh, Alien Expo, you know, this Bruce Pine Alien Conference and Expo, right? Yeah. And we talked to him for a while, but I mean, it's it was worth going to. They and, were very, very nice, and yeah. she took a really nice crooked picture and put it up on her website. <laughs> Stop. Well, that's okay. But you know, photographer in me was just kind of like, ooh. <laughs> you know, there's a difference between having artistic license with imagery, you know, and maybe that maybe the the angle of the image is, is designed to. No, it's a crooked picture, but, but she's a very nice lady, and she like. also has an incredible showcase of local minerals yeah. inside her shop. And say what you will about photography, she's amazing at like lapidary and faceting arts. Yeah, she has a lot of her specimens there, and I'm like, wow, she's she's very experienced in this, like beautiful rocks. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was good. I mean, if you like minerals and you like rocks and you like quartz and that sort of thing, Spruce Pine uh, in that uh, area has lots of mines and stuff like that. Kind of check it out, but um, we suggest that one. It was great. It was nice and clean. You know, restaurants, you can go buy a bucket of rocks for like 15 bucks and figure some stuff out. Yeah. If that's your thing. You know, to me, I, I'm not really a rock nurse, so it's just a bunch of rocks, but it's a good thing. He got me a bucket of uh, mixed rocks, and I'm waiting for tomorrow morning so I can go through them. <laughs> yeah. So excited. It's going to be great. I have a love well, of rocks. That's fine. <laughs> you can like all the rocks you want. Just don't wake me up like early in the morning to go out and look at rocks because that's going to be a problem. But unless it does, I have my coffee, the the the. And remember, the coffee is brought to me by you when you shop on Amazon <laughs> and use the link. Well, I, I'm just excited to go through some minerals where I'll find some stuff from sp spruce pine. <laughs> from so, spruce pine. Yes. It, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So anyway, we thought we'd put together the podcast and talk about the Georgia Guidestones because they was they're pretty in, they was interesting right? <laughs> because they're pretty interesting and you know we went in twenty fourteen is twenty fifteen or twenty fourteen I can't remember I'm trying to remember did we Doesn't go matter. on our way it, back it was or? like in August or something but. so I think it was like on our way back yeah yeah so that's right because we did um, eight states in three days yeah don't don't 
but yeah, it was good to go back and see it again. It was good to go back and get, you know, a different opinion from people who'd never seen it before. And um, that was part of our Weird Wednesday, because the last Weird Wednesday we did was part two of our series about Andrew's Geyser, which is a local weird thing in uh, uh, the town of Marion, North Carolina. I mean, I'm sorry, Old Fort, North Carolina. Uh, And then we did the part one, and we uh, had an interview with a cryptid guy, and uh, also M&D Paranormal for that one. So yeah, every Wednesday we're going to do something weird. Yeah. And our next Weird Wednesday is probably going to be, and I say probably because weather dependent, of course, Brown Mountain Lights. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. What do you think about that? Okay. Very nice. So, anyway, that's been the podcast for today, and we do really appreciate you listening to the podcast. And if you have the opportunity and the wherewithal... You can always find all of our links in our show notes, and you can click those links and take a look if you so desire. If you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But if you happen to be cruising around listening to your podcast on your whatever platform you're using, your platform of choice there, and you decide you'd like to give us a rating, that'd be super cool. Thank you. Uh, ratings help podcasts grow. Yes. Whenever you rate a podcast, you actually increase its visibility, which allows it to reach more listeners. Yes. So please give us a rating. <laughs> we don't want to sound like we're begging. We're not. We would like it, though. Yes. And yes. if you'd like to reach out. It's like this- saying, hey, what you eating? <laughs> oh, yeah, that looks nice. Okay. <laughs> would you stop? Yeah. If you'd like to reach out to the show, be sure to reach out to us at contact at creepgeeks.com. We're also looking for more submissions or suggestions for our Weird Wednesday topics. So if you've got an idea, shoot us an email or even jump into our Facebook group, uh, Creep Geeks Facebook group, and give us your ideas. Maybe we'll yeah, check we, them out. Yeah, we do have a pretty active Facebook group. People share lots of funny things and different ideas with stuff like that, so it's awesome yeah. that they do participate. And also, we also have a, a Cheap Geek YouTube channel and a Facebook group. It's super active over there. You should definitely check that out. It's all about product reviews, DIYs, how-tos, and just typically funny stuff that you find on the internet. <laughs> and so if you go and you check out the Cheap Geek Facebook group, or just do Cheap Geek when you search in Facebook, you can be one of the 60, I'm sorry, 70 plus thousand followers that likes to share and laugh and yuck it up with the internet stuff. So cool. it's a good time. And I just figured that out. I was like, wow, that's 70,000 people. So for all those people that kind of follow along with Creep Geeks and Cheap Geek, very much appreciated. But other than that, that's about all I got. Yep. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. Okay. You good? Yeah. All right. Anyway, thanks for listening. See you later. Take it easy. Bicycle. Bye.